All right, Nick, let's talk about the Michigan Wolverines. Interesting update in the whole saga around, revolving around the Wolverines. I think this just kind of shows how this whole situation really isn't as odd as it seems. This seems to be a story as old as time, something that's been going on for a long time in the history of college football, but people are trying to blow it out of proportion, something that uh, I think is very interesting. And let's get into the, the story here because I think it's going to help reveal a lot of information and just exactly what has been going on. So, Nick, this, of course, is from over on On3Sports. They let out an article talking about uh, on Monday, a former Big Ten staffer told them that they shared documents with Michigan proving opponents had their signs. So the tables have now been turned. Michigan releasing a document saying that other teams had Michigan signs. He said those documents have been sent to the Big Ten and exactly which schools were involved have been revealed. According to ESPN's Adam Rittenberg and Tom Van Heron, three Big Ten scrolls worked together and compiled all of Michigan's signs. Purdue was reportedly on the receiving end uh, of all of Michigan's or Purdue was reportedly on the receiving end from Ohio State and Rutgers for last season's Big Ten championship game in Indianapolis. Sources to at Tom VH and me, Big Ten received documents from Michigan that says UM says Ohio State, Rutgers, and Purdue communicated about Michigan signs and signals in 2022. Documents show that Purdue, which faced Michigan in the Big Ten championship game, got offensive signals from Ohio State. As, long, as well as defensive signals from Rutgers. As we all know, uh, that didn't help them out. Michigan was able to win that game. But I think nonetheless, Nick, this is just a very interesting story showing that not only are people accusing Michigan of taking other team signs, these very teams that they say they're taking the signs from took the signs from Michigan's as well. So I think this whole scheme, I think the biggest kicker here is even though Michigan signs were stolen, they were still able to overcome it. So I think this shows this whole story really isn't as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. I'm curious what your thoughts are on how all of this is enveloping. But Michigan fans, in the comments below, huge game this weekend versus Penn State, biggest of the year, come out. I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. What is the final score of the Michigan Penn State game going to be in the comment section below? But Nick, what are your thoughts on all of this and what does all of this even really mean for Michigan? So there's a couple things to unpack here when I first heard the story. And look, at this point, you know, we want to give it time to make sure it gets 100% verified. But if this is 100% true, as it's reported, and these are solid sources, so that's why we're going with them. These are not fly-by-night people on Twitter. These are serious reporters from serious organizations. So there's a lot of reason to believe them. To me, this is far worse than any accusation that, of anything against Michigan or any other program, because here's why. To me, the basic core promise of college football is that when push comes to shove, it's all about us versus them. It doesn't matter about anything. It's about us beating all of our rivals. It's about Michigan beating Rutgers, Ohio State, Penn State. It's about Ohio State beating Michigan and Rutgers and Purdue and all of that, right? Be all, beating all your rivals and trying to win the conference. That's a tale as old as college football back since 1863, mm -hmm. since Princeton and Rutgers played the very first game of college football. That's what it's been like in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, all up to today. Beat your rivals, win the conference, and then move on from there. If this, if this is true and there was collusion between Rutgers and Ohio State to aid Purdue, to me that just flies in the face of what college football and frankly competitive sports is all about. You don't help your rivals. That's, that should be rule number one. And there were some people on social media that when this report came out said, well, I don't know if this is specifically against the rules or anything like that. I'm like, it's not against the rules because the people that wrote the rule book assumed that programs would not help their rivals because that's against the integrity of the game, even though I hate using that phrase, but this is literally an example of that. So I think from that perspective, this is true. This is pretty disgusting. And if I'm an Ohio State fan, if I'm a Purdue fan, and if I'm a Rutgers fan and I hear this, I, I, you guys got to be, I would be embarrassed, right? Look, I'm not, I'm not a big 10 guy. I'm a one double FCS guy. That's where I went to college. That's where I played. But if I heard that my program was working with my rivals to beat another rival program, I would be humiliated. I'd be embarrassed because I'm like, that's not what this is all about. I hate all of my rivals. I want to destroy every single one of my rivals. Every single time I play them, 
I don't want to work with them ever. And if this is true, then that flies completely in the face of all this. But I do agree with your core point here, is that right now what's going on in the Big Ten is literally it seems like every single program is doing something that falls into maybe some gray area or not. It seems like everyone's playing fast and loose with the rules. At this point, everyone is as guilty or as innocent as anybody else in terms of violations of the rules and everything going forward. And I think right now the Big Ten has a pretty clear and easy situation in front of them. Just wait for the NCAA to investigate this for two years and like maybe put out a little fine or something like that, and then everyone can move on with their lives. I think because of this report, which again, great job by Michigan for releasing it, and, and you know getting these to these sources giving those documents out i think because of this i think this will help everyone kind of go to bed a little bit about this stupid silliness and we can go back to playing football yeah nick and like you said you kind of explained this in a very good way and i agree with you here because this is like back in the day let's say when uh, alabama and clemson were in the national championship this is almost like say like if the gamecocks colluded with clemson to try to get alabama like georgia and carolina colluded to get clemson the signs to go face alabama you know these are all big 10 teams but nonetheless the point still stands two hated rivals that yeah. absolutely despise each other come together to try to beat alabama like that doesn't feel right when you say something like that it'd be one thing like you said if it was just Clemson gathering information to try to win the game on their own, okay. Uh, you know, more power to them as far as, you know, they were just doing the best or the, the most they could to win the game. And you kind of, at one point, you can respect someone for doing that, you know. Uh, they were just doing the best they could to try to win the game. But when you're a hated rival, it's like you go to them and be like, hey, help me beat this other guy. Like, it just doesn't feel good when no. something like that is going on. It feels even dirtier than whatever they have alleged that Michigan has done. So, like you said, I hope that all of this information, I hope more information comes out, quite frankly. I hope more teams talk about other teams, having other team signals, so we can get this all out on you know the back end and get it past this. Because I think that potentially uh, this, like you said, will help everybody move past all of this and we can put it all to bed and just move on and get more quality football.